Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hello, guys. So. So unprepared. What would have changed if Julius Caesar had survived? Preemptive like knowledge, a fantastic channel. Over 1 mil subs. Well deserved. My name is Connor. I am from Rhode Island. I like to learn about things and watch stuff. I am ready to learn. If you are not ready to learn, there's the door. Omex is down the hall. You're in the wrong class. Let's go. I will go, sighs the authoritative voice of Rome's most important person. His hesitation had been suppressed by his friend and lieutenant, Brutus? Decimus Junius Brutus Albinus. Will someone of your stature pay attention to the dreams of a woman and the omens of foolish men? The man asked his superior. Despite his fears telling him otherwise, Julius Caesar had decided that the trusted Decimus was right, though no one could ever be too cautious. As the almighty dictator prepared to meet the Senate, he opted to wear a layer of chainmail beneath his tunic, if only to ease his paranoia. Accompanied by Decimus and a handful of bodyguards, still hoping simply to quell his discontent, Caesar was off to the Senate session. Upon the entourage's arrival, Caesar was approached by Tilius Simber, who handed him a petition which addressed the recalling of his exiled brother. Simber was surrounded by the other senators by this point, but Caesar simply dismissed the group and attempted to carry on. In an instant, chaos erupted. Stop! Booms the unmistakable voice of Caesar's loyal ally, Mark Antony. At the sound of his cry, Caesar turned to his friend, hurtling toward him as Simber frantically reached for the dictator's tunic, a dagger suddenly in hand. Caesar desperately tried to break free from the grasp as Antony reached the duo, slamming Simber to the ground and freeing his friend in a single moment. Caesar escaped with no more than a superficial cut on his neck. The rest of the Senate stood in terrified and frozen silence. Simber struggled back to his feet, a look of horror on his face. Antony stood between the senators and their leader. He had just saved the life of Julius Caesar. A boy! What if this had been the outcome of the events of the Ides of March 44 BC? What if Caesar wasn't assassinated? There are a plethora of possibilities that could have saved the life of the Roman dictator. He had been cautioned. Mark Antony could have arrived in time. Caesar could have received more poignant warnings. The mighty ruler could have lived, but... Augustus would pro or Octavian would probably still be his heir, right? In this timeline. Received more poignant warnings. The mighty ruler could have lived, but he didn't. So now we are left to wonder what a world without his assassination would have been. And while we can't say for certain, there are some things we may be able to predict. This video is brought to you by Masterworks. Caesar really made his mark on history, being the subject of both cultural and intellectual phenomena for centuries. Take this 15th century painting by Apollonio di Giovanni, or this 17th century bust, or this 1981 Basquiat. These works of art all sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars at auction. Well, in fact, the total sold- What is that? It looks like I draw it. I drew it sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars at auction. Well, in fact, the total wealth held in art is estimated to be worth $1.7 trillion and is projected to grow with $900 billion more by 2026. On top of that, contemporary art pieces are up 164% from 1995 to 2021. The only problem? You might need millions of dollars to invest in art. Well, or a share of art. I know friends, where it's going. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears because this new tech. Guys, if you do this, make sure to use the slash Nolegia. It helps out the uh, channel, gives them more money. Next startup is opening the world of art and history to the masses. Usually being a niche reserved for very rich people, now you can too invest in art thanks to masterworks.io, meaning that this platform allows you to buy shares in art pieces, allowing you to receive a return when these art pieces are sold. 
Masterworks' team of art experts analyzes over 60,000 data points to find trending artists with high potential for growth. In just a few clicks, you can visit masterworks.io, create an account, browse their artwork, and start investing in history with the future. You can gain priority access by clicking on our link in the description. Thus, you can start immediately, and you will also support our Jim channel. Kramer. So check it out. For starters, Julius Caesar would have surely retaliated against the conspirators had the situation been one in which he knew about the failed plot. His supporters amongst the general public may have done so as well, but Caesar's revenge would be damning. Still, we don't know whether he would go as far as to use this chance to turn the Republic into an empire by purging the Senate of opposition as his successor would later do. But let's assume that he would prosecute those involved without threatening the Republic. In this case, Caesar likely would have continued his populist and political reforms, and he also had a few plans for further conquest. In fact, days after the Ides of March, Caesar was planning on heading off for a campaign to eventually conquer all of Parthia, starting first in Greece, where he would set off for Dacia. The goal was to initially annex Dacia, currently under the leadership of King Burabista, and then, more easily, take Parthia. But the former would not be easy to seize either. Nevertheless, Caesar had already begun preparations for this campaign, which he had believed would take roughly three years in total. The reason why he was planning to go first to Greece was that Caesar had already sent over 16 legions and 10,000 cavalry for training, and by March 18th, they were supposed to be ready for the dictator and his plan did How old was he when he died? He was 55. Okay. And by March 18th, they were supposed to be ready for the dictator and his planned endeavor. And while this sounds like some good preparation, it actually leads us to have some doubts about whether Caesar could have even accomplished his goals in Dacia. The reason for this is that even if Caesar had been intending to bring more than six legions, he never seems to have amassed the necessary amount in the past. At times, he had commanded roughly a dozen legions at once, but even if he could do that in Dacia, he still would have likely been heavily outnumbered. This is Guys, is it fair that it seems that every empire is doomed to fail because sooner or later, the fervor that is only present in earlier empires who have the, uh, um, the drive to create massive things and war, and eventually when you get so powerful, generations go by where that kind of fizzles out and you don't have that same mentality. And then eventually it just kind of withers into nothingness if it's not conquered. Assumption is based on the current situation in Dacia and the facts that in the second century AD, Emperor Trajan did manage to pacify Dacia, but it took two campaigns and a handful of additional legions to help. And even with a larger army, Trajan couldn't beat Adacia, which had notably diminished since the time of Caesar, until the second campaign. This also means that when Trajan returned and won, he already knew what to expect and could plan for just that. Whereas Caesar may have been a bit too overconfident, and therefore wouldn't have realized that his six legions, or even maybe a dozen, were in for a serious challenge, and maybe a mountain they just couldn't climb. Especially given that King Burabista was a skilled leader and military man, just as Caesar was. So, it's quite possible that Rome may have simply failed to take Dacia entirely, and could have even been locked in a war with the kingdom until Caesar's death at the least. But let's pretend, for the sake of our imaginary timeline, that Caesar somehow did defeat King Burabista and annex Dacia. The next target would be Parthia. Now, even one more question. So obviously he would have always have been very famous, right? <clears throat> but do you think he would be as famous if he didn't get assassinated? Right? I I I'm not saying that in this timeline where he's not assassinated, his name like withers into nothingness. I'm sure he'd still be remembered. But do you think he would be as well remembered and known if the assassination didn't occur?
Even if somehow Rome was able to top Dacia, conquering Parthia would be no picnic in the park either. It was even stated by Suetonius that in this case, Caesar knew that Parthia may be too tough of an opponent and had planned to proceed cautiously. According to some historians, Caesar surely would have had some success and maybe won Early. enough skirmishes and battles to satisfy himself and the Romans back home. But there's a very high probability that he simply would have not been able to fully conquer Parthia. Not only were the Parthians a formidable enemy just like the Dacians, but Parthia itself was too far from Rome and much too large for Caesar to logically be able to annex and maintain it the same. Okay, what is this little like vestigial organ to the Caspian Sea right here? Is Okay, sorry. Additionally, Caesar was not in good health by this point either, and he may have never even made it back from Parthia, either from his health problems or simply death in battle. So even if the case that the Parthia campaign, including Dacia, had been able to go on or even been partially triumphant, one thing very probably would have remained the same. Caesar's successor would have been Octavian. Okay. Due to Caesar's lack of a better alternative, Octavian likely would have ended up succeeding Caesar nevertheless, and actually may have been able to do so even more easily had Caesar lived long enough to aid the transition. So for from the point of whenever Caesar died, things may not have changed too drastically unless one plot twist happened to occur. If Mark Antony had managed to reach Caesar in time to save his life, either right. in the early I thought about this. I thought about this. Okay, I did. I wonder if he would just feel even more indebted to, uh, you know, Mark Antony and then be like, okay, you saved my life. Maybe you should be it. ...of the assassination attempt, or before it even started, had Caesar also believed him, Octavian may have been sidelined. Antony was an undoubtedly important Roman politician. Yeah, and but he's... Although he would not have usually been Caesar's first choice, the loyalty and bravery shown in his actions of saving the dictator's life may have greatly shifted Caesar's view of him. In this case, it is technically possible that Mark Antony could have succeeded Caesar. And had he also been able to defeat any challenges from opposition, may have altered the timeline of the Roman Republic's evolution. Antony also may have never died in Egypt at his own hand if he had taken the place of Caesar upon his death. This would be because if Caesar didn't die for a bit longer, Antony's relationship with Cleopatra may have never even begun meaning the events leading up to their deaths wouldn't occur, and so neither would the deaths themselves. This scenario, though less likely, would have had a better chance at altering the aftermath of Caesar's death. No matter what the scenario would have been had Caesar survived, though, it's hard to predict every variable and guess what the most accurate timeline would have been. I, I sort of have this, like, vision of... Uh, I know it's really dumb and I shouldn't, but I, I just see Mark Antony as like the, the dumb jock sidekick to Caesar. And I, I know that's unfair, but it's just the way my brain has kind of registered him so far. I need to learn more about him, but I, I feel like he would not be as mentally capable as Augustus. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm theories and theories abound as to what Rome would have looked like without the successful assassination of Julius Caesar. But still, in most cases, it does seem like the Republic likely would have become an empire in roughly the same time, especially had Caesar's successor remained Octavian. As fun as it would be to believe that the change of one single yet theatrical event would alter all of history to some extreme degree, it appears that while Caesar surviving for a little longer would have changed some things, it really wouldn't have been as dramatic as we may like to think. Yeah, I, I, I think that makes complete sense. Nevertheless, given all the possible outcomes and timelines, we will never know for sure. That, that's that's kind of what I mean by... like It's almost like he met the perfect end to like solidify him into this greater than life figure that's going to be remembered for all time and it's not like he was assassinated when he was 35 he was in his 50s so 
it's almost like like the not for I'm sure Caesar would have preferred not to be assassinated, but looking back just from afar, it was kind of the perfect ending. No. And it will always be fun to let our imaginations run wild. Really cool video, guys. Um, Nalegia is awesome as always. I had a few questions there, right? I'm waking up. That was a good wake-up video. Hope you're all doing well. Chin up, guys. Hope you're doing well. You'll be good soon, if not. See ya.